Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, April 19th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about Kirsten Cinema and Mark Kelly, the two Democratic senators from the state of Arizona, and we're going to be discussing the independence streak that Kirsten Cinema has been on, pretty much defying the Democratic Party and being very similar to Joe Manchin, uh, meaning that she's reluctant to support prime Democratic ideals and has sometimes sided with the Republican Party when it really mattered against the Democratic Party versus Mark Kelly. Uh, the newly elected Democratic senator who has been much more favorable towards the Democrats rather than Kirsten Cinema. And just looking at the two differences, I think that they will show you some very uh, interesting results coming out of the state because we have opinion polling data from the state of Arizona that pretty much tells us how the Arizona voters are responding to Kirsten Cinema and her uh, reluctance to vote with the Democratic Party on certain things and how they're responding to Mark Kelly, even though he was recently elected. Uh, public sentiment is very important to track, and it has certainly decreased for Kirsten Cinema. And I just want to compare the two senators to show you um, exactly uh, what they are pretty much going up against each other and what this means for potential re-election bids or potential primary challengers. So this poll was taken mid-March 2021, released right at the end. I think it was released on March 30th. The reason why I'm making this video now is because I think that it's uh, uh, something that's certainly going to be discussed over the next year and a half. Just the uh, cinema and mansion, two votes on the Democratic side that won't be there and won't go with the party line 100% of the time. And as you actually might find out in this video that Kirsten Cinema typically doesn't vote with the Democratic Party. So what we're looking at uh, before we get into the opinion polling data, I want to actually show you why this is even in discussion. So 538 has this website where they track Congress in the age of Trump. They don't have a website up for Joe Biden. I think it just makes sense because we're only uh, three months into his term currently. But tracking Congress in the age of Trump pretty much it uh, gives a Trump score to every single congressman, that means senator and representative, um, and congresswoman, just how often they vote with President Trump and how much they vote in his direction or vote against him. So let's take a look. I'm sure you can tell from those who are in the 100% Trump score in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s, these are Republicans. These are Republicans that back President Trump almost every step of the way. But what you might notice is that Democratic names start popping up around 54, 50, 50, uh, 45 percent. So right around that area. And one name strikes uh, my attention. Kirsten Cinema being up here with the likes of Heidi Heitkamp, Joe Donnelly and Joe Manchin really makes me wonder whether or not she's actually as pro-Democratic as she might have seemed leading into the 2018 election. The reason why Kirsten Cinema has been receiving this criticism from many members of the Democratic Party is because she has voted under Trump's presidency and continuing now um, in many points with Donald Trump's wishes and with the Republican Party's wishes more than she has with the Democratic Party. 50.4% of the time under her term, under Donald Trump's as well, she voted in the direction of President Trump. Now, you could defend it with Heidi Heitkamp coming from a state where Donald Trump won by 30 points, or Joe Donnelly coming from a state where Trump won by 19, or Joe Manchin coming from a state where Trump won by 40. But Kirsten Sinema came from a state where Trump won by 3.5% in the 2016 election. She ended up winning in 2018, which should have been uh, a, t a significant uh, change in the direction of Arizona, which it was. But it seems as if she did not recognize that. She ended up voting with President Trump as if she was representing a state that was going to crucify her if she voted with the Democratic Party. It made sense for Heidi Heitkamp. It made sense for Joe Donnelly. It made sense for Joe Manchin. They had re-election bits in 2018 they needed to worry about. And even though they voted with President Trump more often than they did with the Democratic Party, they still lost their elections. But the thing is, they don't come from states as diverse as Arizona or states as pro-Democrat as Arizona. In fact, there are plenty of other Democrats that actually don't even rival Kirsten Sinema in terms of overall percent. Claire McCaskill, 5% behind, comes from Missouri, a state Donald Trump won by 19 points in 2016. You have Bill Nelson, a state Trump won by one point in uh, uh, 2016, won by uh, three points in 2020, did not shift to the Democratic Party, in fact, got more uh, Republican 
from 2016. Arizona, of course, was not that case. Uh, you know, you have Angus King, which makes sense. He's not even a Democrat. He's an independent. So you could even argue that even further than you could for Kirsten Cinema. But there's a big gap between that. That's a 13 point gap. And this one really actually jumps out to me. Um, Doug Jones and John Tester. John Tester comes from a state where Trump won by 19 in 2016, uh, won by a very similar amount in 2020. But he only voted with President Trump 30% of the time. Now, we don't have uh, an accurate score for Mark Kelly. He was sworn in uh, back in in uh, early 2020. So actually, no, right at the end of November. I forgot it's a special election. So he was seated uh, right as Donald Trump was leaving office. So we can't actually get a super conclusive uh, percentage here. It says 20%. I'm not going to say that's super accurate. But Mark Kelly has certainly come out in support of more things than Kirsten Cinema has in favor of the Democratic Party. And it's been much more open to discussions about abolishing the filibuster, much more open to discussions about um, many things in the Democratic Party has been halted with the COVID-19 infrastructure bill. You weren't waiting on Mark Kelly vote, you are waiting on Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. And the Arizona Democratic Party has seen uh, a significant decrease in their candidates here in terms of overall support. Actually, specifically their candidate, Kirsten Cinema, who will be up in 2022. Amongst the general public, what you might notice is that Kirsten Cinema's unfavorability rating is actually very similar to the favorability rating. 39% of voters say they have a favorable or somewhat favorable view of Kirsten Cinema. And then you have a 40% amount of the Arizona public that says they have a somewhat unfavorable view or a very unfavorable view. And then when you go down to the data amongst uh, different breakdowns, you have Democrats, liberal Democrats, conservative Democrats, and then you go into the Republican Party, you will notice that in some instances, the popularity rating amongst Republicans and Democrats are very similar. Let's take a look at the liberal Democrats, this voting group in the state of Arizona. The approval rating and the disapproval rating are roughly even. You see a 40% disapproval rating and then a slightly higher approval rating, which is 46%, but it's nothing that Kirsten Cinema should be applauded for. It's nothing that she would be happy about if she was looking at these numbers. And then when you look amongst Republicans and you look at moderate slash liberal Republicans, what you might notice is that the approval rating is 40% and the disapproval rating is 43%, which means that the approval rating versus the disapproval rating is very similar amongst moderate slash liberal Republicans as it is amongst liberal Democrats. And I find that to be very dramatic in terms of the sheer amount of Democrats that don't support Kirsten Cinema. 30% of Democrats in Arizona have an unfavorable view of their incumbent senator. And a large reason for that, and I'm going to tell you now, is due to the fact that she did not vote or uh, is reluctant to vote with the Democratic Party the same way other senators are, including Mark Kelly. There is, yes, this might scream bipartisanship that liberal Democrats and moderate slash conservative Republicans uh, or moderate slash liberal Republicans view Kirsten Cinema in a very similar fashion. But the point is, she's making her own party angry to appease an electorate that won't even vote for her. As much as she would want to believe that these Republicans that approve of her would vote for her in 2024, in every chance and in every instance where she is placed up against a Republican in a poll, in a, you know, in an actual ballot, whatever it might be, she will lose their vote to that candidate. You need to inspire your base before you go beyond that. You can't win an election without your base, because if you're relying solely on independent and Republican voters as a Democrat, chances are you're probably not going to win your next election unless you get 100% of that Democratic vote. Mark Kelly seems to be doing dramatically better. Amongst regular voters, you're going to see a very similar divide here. You're looking at roughly, a thir uh, sorry about that, 49% uh, of voters have a favorable view of Mark Kelly. And then you look amongst the unfavorability rating, and it's 38%. So the spread is better for Mark Kelly, but Mark Kelly isn't approved of by the majority of constituents. But amongst Democratic constituents, it's very, very high. This is because he's not in the headlines about not voting with the Democratic Party. He's not being discussed amongst top Democrats. There is no type of discussion of a primary challenge against Mark Kelly. And while Mark Kelly could go down a very similar route as Kirsten Cinema in the future, chances are he's not going to. And based off where he says he stands on current uh, important issues for the Democratic Party, I honestly don't think that's in his future. Again, the Trump score is not something that I think is super accurate. He was only in Congress for a few months before Trump was out. So really, I would take that with a grain of salt. But the point is, amongst the general constituency and amongst the general public in Arizona, he's liked significantly better amongst Democrats and better amongst all voters. An 80% approval rating amongst uh, Democratic voters in the state. When you're looking at Kristen Cinema, it's just 50%. 50 to 30 versus 
80 to 11. There's a huge difference there. But amongst Republicans, Kirsten Cinema's numbers actually seem a little bit better. And again, I think this is what she might be trying to go for, but at the end of the day, it doesn't work if these voters won't go into your side. I think the reason why Kirsten Cinema wins over these Republican voters is because she votes in their favor, so they say, okay, I somewhat approve of her, or I don't negatively approve of her, but it doesn't matter. They aren't going to vote for you just because you voted with President Trump a few times. Go ahead and ask Claire McCaskill. Go ahead and ask Heidi Heitkamp or Joe Donnelly. Joe Manchin was one of the few Democrats to actually survive that. John Tester didn't win his race because he voted with President Trump the majority of the time. Joe Manchin might have, but Joe Donnelly and Heidi Heitkamp did not. And cinema doesn't necessarily have a similar reason uh, to Manchin, Donnelly, or uh, Heitkamp. She doesn't come from a red state. That's why Mark Kelly is seeming to be so confident in this, uh, this Democratic vote streak that he has. Uh, and overall, I think that Kirsten Sinema is seeing a huge decrease relative to Mark Kelly because of this voting record. You know, there's a reason why you're turning Democrats against you. Um, there's a reason why the Democratic numbers are turning against you after you vote this way. This is not something that will be uh, too beneficial in the eyes of the Democratic Party in Arizona. When these primary voters go to the ballot and they're faced with an option that could potentially be more left-wing than Kirsten Cinema, despite her being formerly a member of the Green Party, I mean, it's very interesting to see how she has changed over time and what this Senate seat has actually done in terms of her expected voting record versus her actual voting record. And I think Mark Kelly in many ways, is voting the way that people expected Kirsten Cinema to vote. And as much as she wants to be this bipartisan senator, realistically speaking, she doesn't need to be. Looking at her 2018 results, she won by the exact amount that Mark Kelly did in the 2020 election. If he has nothing to worry about, neither should she. And she's up in 2024. It's not as if she was up in 2020 when she voted this way. It's not as if she's up in 2022. She will likely be fine in 2024, given Arizona's general trend towards the Democratic Party. Arizona went blue for the first time in decades, and yet she still cons considerably, you know, is different than the other Senate Democrats, even ones from states that should be arguably more competitive or uh, more beneficial for the Democrats there to vote with the Republican Party. For example, let's take 2018, because she was on this ballot. If you're looking at Sherrod Brown in Ohio, you could defend that. Donald Trump won the state by eight points, and Sherrod Brown would want to win in the future. But Joe Biden won the state of Arizona in 2020. You can make the argument for John Tester in the state of Montana, for Joe Manchin in the state of West Virginia. You can't really make the same argument for Kirsten Cinema, especially when the public says, we don't even like Kirsten Cinema the same way we do Mark Kelly, yet Mark Kelly votes with the Democratic Party far more often and has been much more supportive of the Democratic Party's ideologies. And it's not just a cinema versus Mark Kelly divide where you see the actual um, lack of Democratic support take full effect. When you're comparing it to Joe Biden's favorability rating in the state of Arizona, you will actually start to see exactly how detrimental this has been to Kirsten Cinema's image statewide. Again, you're not winning Republican voters in Arizona. Yes, you may come across as bipartisan with this, but Arizona is not West Virginia. Arizona is not Montana. Arizona is not Ohio. They're not going to have a huge amount of Republican crossover votes. The Democratic Party wins by energizing the base the same way that Joe Biden did. Those Democrats in West Virginia, Montana, and Ohio are anomalies. Kirsten Cinema is not an anomaly. You could replace her with another Democrat and they would win as well. You could not replace Joe Manchin, John Tester, or Sherrod Brown and have that Democrat win unless there were some major circumstances surrounding the election. But generic Democrats in Arizona realistically have a chance in the future. So Kirsten Cinema is not this one-time only candidate that will only be there until they retire. No, Cinema could be primaried and could end up still seeing a Democrat in the lead and a Democrat winning that Senate race in the general election. Kirsten Cinema is replaceable. Joe Manchin, John Tester, Sherrod Brown are not. And that's the harsh reality here. And that's exactly what's being told to us with these favorability rating numbers. Joe Biden, 55% approval rating amongst the general public. When you're looking at Donald Trump, it's nowhere nearly as high. It's a 36% approval rating, 55 versus 36. And looking at the unfavorability rating, it's considerably higher, 40% for Biden versus 60% for Trump. And then when you're looking at Governor Ducey's favorability rating numbers, 50% of the public disapproves of him, disapproves of him but 41% approve of Doug Ducey. 
And that's with a considerable amount of the GOP turning away from him because of President Trump's criticism against him. So even with the GOP base against him, Doug Ducey is doing better than Kirsten Cinema in terms of overall favorability rating. 41% is higher, higher than 40%. And I think that's something that really needs to be pointed out. Cinema is the least liked statewide official in the state of Arizona, at least major statewide official. When you're looking at the two senators, when you're looking at Biden, when you're looking at Trump, when you're looking at Ducey, Kirsten Cinema has the lowest ranking favorability rating. And that is because of her voting record. That is the only thing that separates her from Mark Kelly. In fact, she went in with a very progressive past. People might have expected her to be a new type of Bernie Sanders coming from a battleground state. And while, yes, she was very quick to you know, say that that's not how she believes anymore or that she's a realist, whatever it might be, or that she's a centrist and she's moved towards center left, whatever it might be, there are plenty of centrist Democrats and center left Democrats that vote party line and their favorability ratings thank them for it. And, you know, the overall uh, approval rating in the states are considerably higher than Kirsten Cinema. She's only making her base angry. She's only making the Democratic Party angry. And at the end of the day, that is the only voting group that is going to be there for her 100% of the time. And she's trying to knock that down to 90 or 80 percent. Cinema needs their votes more than she needs the Republican Party's votes. Joe Biden has proven to us that you don't need to have a blue wave year in order to win an election in Arizona. As the state has gotten continuously more blue uh, over the past few elections, Cinema needs to recognize that she will probably be fine in 2024. Joe Biden won the state of Arizona two years after Cinema did. In four years from now, there's no telling of how many more Democratic voters will enter into the state of Arizona. Overall, cinema will be fine, but she might not survive a primary if she continues down this dangerous path of trying to be this bipartisan and independent senator that clearly is not doing well uh, and being received well amongst her constituents. Yes, I think bipartisanship is a good thing in this country, but politically speaking, cinema is not getting a bump for it. She is not being viewed positively by the National Democratic Party, by the Arizona Democrats. The only people she's really appeasing are voters that at the end of the day won't end up voting for her. So if she's worried about electability, she's faltering, as she's failing. If she's worried about favorability rating, she's also failing. There is no perfect media for curse, medium for Kirsten Cinema because she's not in the same position uh, as Joe Manchin, John Tester, Sherrod Brown. She isn't in this red state, uh, solid red state, uh, and, you know, and she's a Democratic senator. She doesn't have that interesting dynamic that Manchin might have. She doesn't offer this bipartisan view because she doesn't come from a state where she needs to be bipartisan. This is by choice. And the Democratic Party knows that. They know she will be fine. She probably knows she will be fine. And many Democrats are questioning whether or not she truly represents the Democratic values that they elected her on. And her favorability rating is taking a dip because of it. There was no reality in which I thought that after 2018, Cinema would be the most disliked and least liked uh, senator or representative or governor or you know presidential uh, candidate or former one, whatever it might be. There was no reality in which I thought she would be doing the worst out of any major statewide official in the state of Arizona. Yet here we are after months of deliberation with the National Democratic Party about what their goals are, what's going to be um, pushed in 2021, what's going to be the prime positions of the Democratic Party. Cinema seems to be in opposition of many major things on the Democratic Party side, and the public seems to be slamming for it in the state of Arizona, specifically the Arizona Democratic Party. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.